What's going on guys, how all you are doing? Welcome to a brand new video tutorial from iPinwist. In today's one, we're gonna talk about, about designing and CSS designer, not a programming thing, but I'm just gonna call or talk about actually or explain the flex design. So what is flex design actually? It's like the main idea behind the flex design is gonna allow you or allow your container to alter its children or its items, size, width and height, so it can just fit the available space, so it sh shrink it, to do not get an overflow and like expands it when there is a, enough space to expand. So if this like seems a bit confusing, you can just see the examples I have in here. So it's very simple as you can tell. We have in here as you can tell the header, the header, and the item one, item two, and the footer. So using regular CSS, they can be a little bit challenging to achieve something like this, especially when using or what when trying to get the full height in here and the full height for the container and the full width as well. So with flex, it's very, very simple. Just setting some attributes in here and you are ready to go to get the full width and height. And this actually design, this actual design technique gonna help either the uh, designers gonna work with complicated thing or programmers like me who like to program, but still they need to use some design for their own application. So you can use flex design very, very easily to achieve fast and quick things. So. Let me just walk you through how this actually works. So to uh, initiate a, a flex design, all you need to do is to put the display flex. So when you put the attribute display to flex, you're, you're good to go. Flex now is running your container. So when putting display flex, that means this is the parent. So the element you have assigned it to the display flex it is the parent and whenever you put a children inside that those are the items of this flex container so you can control it using the other flex attributes and as you can see here so we have flex direction probably the column one so you can change this to column or row the column represents the as you can tell in here we have the header then another container so the header and this one the item one and item two are inside an, an in a container so header is a container by itself the other one or the two items are inside another container then we get the footer container so we're using the columns so getting them vertically in here the header the other container and the footer if we change this to row and make sure like we are in the flex parents and the flex parents we are assigning it to the whole or to the main roots to the main parents in here to the main flex parent then we have the header then we have the container in here which i was talking about where it takes the item one and item two and probably the footer at the end so to achieve something like this that why we are going to, we need actually to use another another container inside the parents and put the children's inside this so that gonna help us to achieve the full height and the full width of the page so uh, let me go back in here and let me show you we have put in the row as you can tell it's changed it to horizontally so the row works by setting the item to a horizontal thing and the vertically uh, or actually the column set them to take the vertical layout and we have also we have like row reverse so we put row reverse and you get the reverse thing so as you can tell we have the footer uh, at the start the item one, the item you no, not gonna be immutable, so we're not gonna change, and the header at the end. So we're just gonna reverse all the elements, start from the end to the beginning. So you can use that as well. Also, it's for the column, you can use column dash reverse to reverse everything in here. So it works the same actually. And let me just come over back in here, and we have this. So for also for the justify content, we're gonna tell it to just, just use the flex start so start from the start of the page you can use flex center to start from the center page you can stand use flex uh, end just to, to start from the end of the page and so on and so forth also for align items and like content you can use a stretch to straight the whole page as you can tell in here or you can use the other attribute to only take a portion of the page so as you might tell i can't explain everything in here so you can just check the Google for the reference for that and you can just manipulate that to understand how it actually works. So we can just focus on the brief things or on the necessary things in here. So for also for the flex container horizontal, as you can tell, we also set the display flex for here. Why? So we can use this item one and item though to, to position them on the page and let them take the whole height and the whole width and over here. So in a way much more easier way, 
this is how we can allow us to do this in a really really nice trick and all you need to do is just put the display flags manage or put another attribute and you're ready to go so to actually explain this how it works let me just walk you or take you to the other code pen in here set up as you can tell we have three children in here and they're taking the whole height of this page so we have child one child two child three and the child four so you might have been noticed that the child two is taking more space than the other children's. So why is that happening? We are doing uh, the same as the the last one actually. So we are putting the flex parent in here. So take the full width and height of the full page, and also take the display of flex and the flex direction of reverse row. So uh, this is not taking effect anyway. So let me just remove it for example, or for a second. And we've taken also the container in order to allow us to take the whole height in here. It's just assigning it to display flex and the flex direction of row. So you can tell we are using row in here. Change it to column. We'll change it to column respectively. No problem. So let me put it back to row. And also we have the flex item. And the flex item, what it takes actually is display to flex. So we set each item in here uh, has like a flex uh, display and the flex one and the flex one tell it to take a flex grow of one so the growing of this item in here is taking one while the other flex dash grow dash two is taking flex two so if you are familiar with aspect ratio this is how it actually works this is taking an aspect ratio of two of two and this one of one so two of two is greater than one of none so this child two is taking more space since we are assigning the flex grow two to the child two that's why it's taking more space so as much as we increase this the space it takes it does increase as well so as you can see child two in here and also for the child three since we are using also flex grow two rather than the flex dash grow two or flex grow one for the class so as you can tell, we can uh, like manipulate how much space it, it can take using the flex attribute in here. So we can put it like flex one or flex two or whatever number we need in order to make this works. And another thing is, so as you can tell, or as, as you can notice, we have the child three has like more text than this. So the child two just the text can be enough for this container, but the child three cannot be enough. So it just not gonna overflow to the child four or any other container where it just gonna return this to line and gonna just keep putting text in like in line in here. So it's not gonna overflow. It just gonna shrink the text to fit the available space. And this is very cool effect and also very, very responsive. So if we try now to like resize the window, as you can see, we get no overflowing at all. So all of them takes their part of the space of the web page of or of the available space in here and without problems, without overflowing problems. And this is how actually they work with responsive design. So if you really intend to make your website look so responsive, I really recommend going ahead and using Flex. And Flex isn't that bad thing at all. It's just very, very easy to use and very, very simple to get started with and also to manipulate the data. So just with a simple or uh, like a couple of attributes in here and you're ready to go to make your containers in here. So as you can see, this is how it works. We also can use the row Flex or the row Dash reverse in here to reverse the whole children's as you can sell. We have the child one now, this the end and the child war or the child or the fourth child comes at the at the beginning. So we can manipulate this how it data, how it just kind of like looks like. And also the other one is justify uh justify dash content. And this can help us to put them in the center, for example. So we can put all of our children in the center, or we can use uh like align items. So justify content gonna work only for the column and for the align items or since we are using row in here so we can use align dash items in order to make this work so as you can see we have all of them aligned into the center not anymore taking the whole page but aligned in the center so we can also put flex end in order to make them take or go to the end of the page this is how it takes effects actually or also flex start only to take the start thing and so on and so forth. So you can manipulate your containers, put them or position them on 
every or or any or position on your web page and you can manipulate them however you want and they can actually be be very responsive as you can tell in here take the whole width change the width and alter its children's space in order or size in order to fit the available space so that was it actually for the flex design if you really intend to learn more about it and work with it i really recommend going ahead and just starting with that you can find the code pen in here so just get into the code pen try to manipulate some attributes in here in order to like play with the with values in here change flex start to flex and in order to see how things are gonna change when you change something in your code and so on and so forth and try to create some and like astonishing containers position some kind of containers on the the page respectively in here like in random positions in order to know how this this actually gonna work so that was it actually guys very simple tutorial a very basic thing and for css design so if i just couldn't like make you understand that or i'm not that good in explaining design things so i will be very sorry about, about that so if you have anything make sure to put it in the comment below i'll be very very happy to let or to help you why not so that was it actually guys i will catch you in the next video tutorial